In this video, I will show you how to set up a foolproofing workflow, including linearizing a printer. The reason why we want to linearize is because linearization ensures our printer prints tone values evenly from 0 to 100%, which results in consistent color and good tone reproduction. So for this example, we are using an Epson X900 driven via a CMYK setup with a basic rip. Now, if the RIP doesn't offer to linearize the printer, you can use our applications. First up is to create a linearization chart, and we do this by using Color Ant. And in order to create a chart, we click on the Custom Chart tool right here. In our example, we're going to use CMYK as the color space. And for the mode, since we have to create a linearization chart, um, we're going to select Linearization. For the number of patches, you can select any one of these, but for our example, we're going to select large. Click Start. Now we have to print our chart, and in order to do that, we click on the Export Chart tool right here. And this creates a chart that we can print. Um, these presets right here depends on the measuring equipment you plan to use to measure your linearization chart as well as your output profiling chart, which I will go over later in this video. Click Start. And you can save your linearization chart in any one of these three formats right here. Click Close. So not only does Colorant create the linearization chart, it also creates a reference file, which defines the layout properties for the selected instrument and chart that was just created. So now that you have your chart, um, go ahead and print your chart. And once it's done drying, you can measure your linearization chart. And you're going to do that by using the measure tool right here. So once you have your measurement, you're going to save it. And you can save it in any one of these files right here. Now that we have our measurements from the linearization chart, the next step is to create a linearization device link profile. And we do that by using Copra. And since we have to create a linearization profile, we're going to use this right here, the linearization tool. Just drag and drop the measurement file into Cobra. Click on Customize. And for the calculation mode, we're going to use linearization according to ISO 20654 with automatic channel limit. And this method is equally known as SCTV or spot color tone value. The method is a modern and good way of linearizing a printer with colorimetric methods, which is better than density linearization. Many RIPs do not support this method yet, which is why we are using Copra in combination with Zebra to apply this method. And the automatic channel limit option finds the sweet spot for the maximum saturation for each primary. Click Next. And click Save. And Copra creates the linearization device link profile. From the Copra homepage, click on Image Conversion. And drag and drop the TIFF file the test chart right here. And for the source profile, you're going to select the linearized device link profile that we created earlier. Click Save. And don't forget to convert the rest of the pages of the test chart. So once the test chart is converted, then you can go ahead and print it. And then once the chart is done drying, the next step is to measure it. And to measure, you'd have to go back to Color Ant, highlight the dot reference text file right here, and click on Measure. And when the measurement is uh, complete, go ahead and save it. 
And in order to create the output profile, we would have to go back to Cobra and select the new printer profile tool right here. And drag and drop the measurement data into Cobra. And since the Epson X900 is an inkjet printer, we're going to select inkjet in the predefined settings list. And in case you wish to customize the separation settings, you would click on customize, click on the color generation tab, and make your edits. And when you're done uh, making your edits, click on next. And for proofing, in order to get the maximum accuracy, we suggest to use the very large profile size option and click save. And Copra creates the output profile. So now that Copra has created the output profile, the next step is to create a proofing queue. And we do this by using Zebra. In Zebra, we have the auto setup wizard, which makes it really easy to create a queue. For the setup mode, since we're creating a proofing queue, we select the proofing setup mode. Now you can either select a pre-calculated device link profile that was created in Cobra, or use Zebra's smart link functionality to get the appropriate settings for proofing selected. For proofing, it usually requires the absolute color metric rendering intent to be used. All you need to do is select a source profile, which in this example is going to be ISO coded version 2 ECI. And for the proofer color space, it's going to be the Epson printer. Enable the media wedge and simulation color space option. This can be an external media wedge or a dynamic one. Select the dynamic media wedge. This option wisely selects patches for the process colors, plus it adds spot colors found in the PDF that you are processing. Double click on the name of the queue to open the configuration. Go to the gradations tab. Click on load curves. The curves that we are going to select is a linearization device link profile that we created earlier and click OK. The next step is to go to the proofing tab and click on options. This is used to customize the dynamic media wedge as well as exclude colors that do not apply. Click OK, then click Save. Now that we have our proofing queue, the final step is to process the PDF. And your linearization is complete. For more information on our ColorLogic applications, please visit colorlogic.de or follow us on one of our social media channels for the latest in ColorLogic news, webinars, and color management technology. Thanks for watching.